Star Spangled Patchwork is a topic for this mini-series on Sewing with Nancy. I'll be showing you unique patchwork techniques using cozy flannel. My first project showcases the stripes and stars frayed edge quilt. If life has you feeling ragged, this quilt is sure to calm your nerves. Made with flannel and Americana colors, the top and backing are sewn at the same time. Plus, a washer and dryer do some of the work. Just throw it in the wash to achieve the frayed edge effect. Discover the joy of patchwork next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 20 years of Sewing with Nancy Zeman, is brought to you by Pfaff, the largest European producer of sewing machines. Pfaff's creative line of sewing machines and hobby lock sergers are simply the best. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears for home, classroom, and industry. Ginger scissors and shears are the choice of professionals. Madeira, superior quality threads from Germany, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Prim Dritz, the source for sewing and quilting notions, including products by Dritz, Collins, and Omnigrid. Amazing designs by Great Notions, your one source for home embroidery and design software. Over 200 disc pack collections currently available, including designs by Nancy Zeman. Koala cabinets from Australia, quality crafted, fully assembled sewing furniture, designed for maximum storage in minimum space. Rowanta, professional performance and beautiful results for all types of ironing, the choice of professionals. And Nancy's Notions Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and unique hard-to-find sewing notions and supplies. You can make the Stripes and Stars quilt any size that you'd like. The size that we have here is a throw that's about 52 by 56, and it has two basic block components. A banner block, which consists of five stripes, and a blue banner at the top, and then, of course, the star block. And the interesting thing about this quilt is that it's reversible. It has the traditional seaming on the flip side, but the frayed edge on the other side. So there really are two right sides to this quilt. When choosing fabrics, I'd like you to choose five for this particular co color combination. We've chosen three reds, a solid and two prints, a tea color and a blue color. Pre-wash these in separate wash loads so that the darks are together and lights are together so that the red, of course, wouldn't bleed onto the ivory color. For the banner block, we're going to be using the tea, the lightest red, and the blue. And we're going to be cutting crosswise strips using a rotary cutter ruler and mat. And I folded the fabrics, meeting the selvages, and then folded in half again. For the T and this light red print, we're going to be cutting three inch wide strips. And for the T color, or the red color, excuse me, cut 12 crosswise strips. So 12 of these will be cut. For the T color, cut eight. And then the blue, you're going to be using the same crosswise cuts, but rather than three inches, these are cut six inches. Just as a refresher, all these instructions will be in the book that accompanies the program. When you are putting these together, since we're going to be creating the right side and the, and the underside at the same time, you're going to make strip combos. Using two strips, the two 45-inch strips, back them, meeting the wrong sides or the underside so that you have reversible strips, and lay out three combinations, three combo strips of the lighter red print, and then stack the 45-inch strips with two tea color fabrics. Now, of course, you could make these in different colorations, but for stars and stripes, these seem like the, the natural combinations. When these are sewn together, since we're creating the backing and the top at the same time, I'm simply going to meet one side together and stitch all four layers at once. After I've sewn all five strips, which is called a strata, putting it all together, then I'll be adding the blue banner to the bottom or top, wherever you'd like to put it, doesn't really matter. Again, having all seam allowances face to one edge. So I'll show you now how to set up the machine to do the stitching. The traditional seam allowance for quilting is a fourth of an inch, but for frayed edge quilting, you'll need half of an inch seam allowances. 
I've moved my needle position so that when I place the presser foot down at the inch mark, my needle is going at the half inch mark. I've moved the needle position. If you are unable to move your needle, simply place a mark or use a magnetic seam guide to mark where the half inch mark from the needle would be placed. I have five strips of fabric stacked in the sequence that they're going to be sewn, and I've already stacked the first and second strips together. Remember, I'll have two layers of the light red print and two layers of the tea color, and they're stacked back to back, so I'm going to be sewing four layers at once. As I'm stitching, you'll notice that I have not any pins here. Now, you'll be, need to be using pins a little bit later, but with the nap of the flannel fabric, you will find that the nap, napped edge, that textured edge will kind of adhere fabrics together. I've also set my machine at a slightly shorter stitch length, about 15 to 18 stitches per inch. So it's not really necessary to use a long stitch, a short stitch is advisable. I have these two strips, actually four strips sewn together. The seam allowance coming to the front side and then it's finished on the reverse side. You'll be sewing all five strips together so that this is the way it will look. A long 45 inch strip. Now you'll be sewing for the size that I gave you earlier, two lengths or two stratas like this. Then do some pressing. And my pressing surface I've kind of finger pressed the seams open. Now simply press them open and it will make cutting, it will be sub cutting next make cutting it much easier if you can do this pressing at this point. So quickly do this. You, as you saw in the finished project, the edges are going to be frayed. So it isn't, pressing isn't as crucial as in traditional quilting. And then the next step is to do some cutting. Subcut the long strips into 11 inch lengths and I'm going to align my cut edge at the zero mark and align my ruler at the 11 inch. Make sure it's about as straight as you can get. And then subcut. Going through quite a few layers, four layers. So cut all the lengths that you need. The remaining strip that we use for this banner block is the blue layer, which I have on my lap. And I have the fabric combo again, or the strip combo, layering the blue back to back. Place that on the bed of your machine place the 11 inch strip of fabric meeting the cut edges and notice I have the st stripes going horizontally again using the half inch seam allowance and just sew these layers together and I'll tuck this underneath after I've sewn one strip into place I'm simply going to butt the second strip to this first one and then I will cut the panels apart, the blocks apart between the stripes. Okay, I've stitched one and now this one I have already pinned. should have used this one first. I'll raise the presser foot, just kind of butt this into place so I'm not going to waste any of the blue fabric and then stitch again. Remember to keep those half inch seam allowances throughout the seaming technique. And because the seam allowances are rather Thick. You will have to kind of watch, what, make certain that they're not stitched in, the, in an in a, or in an awkward position. So I'm almost up to attached here. After sewing all of the layers together, then simply cut the banners apart, and then you will find yourself having interesting blocks that are 16 by 11. I just finished showing you how to make the banner block with five stripes and a blue banner across the top. With the dimensions of this quilt, 52 approximately by 56, you'll need six of these banner blocks. The same thing applies to the star block. This is called a stripes and star quilt. So we have the star blocks that have the star, the frayed star in the center, and then on the reverse side, we also have another star. We use the same frayed star technique, and I'll show you how to do that right now. The finished banner block was 11 by 16, so guess what? The finished star block, or the cut size of that block, is the same size, 11 by 16. To make six blocks, you're going to need double the amount, so 12 pieces of fabric are cut the 11 by 16 and backed into pairs so that you'll have back-to-back -back 
blocks that are 11 by 16. You can see my little notes here, and you can make a little note of that yourself. To create the stars, you'll need two types of cuts. This rectangle is 11 by, or excuse me, 10 by 13, and then you're going to be cutting six blocks as well as six star shapes. And that star shape will be in the booklet that accompanies the program today. On one side of the block, I'll quickly pin in the corners. It doesn't have to be positioned exactly, just have it in the majority of the block, filling up the red area, pin the corners, and then on the flip side, pin the star. I'd like to pin the, large, the rectangle first, just making certain that the star points do not go within a half of an inch of the edge. I talked about earlier using half inch seam allowances. Since this really isn't a seam allowance, you're just going to edge stitch the star into place. I'd like you to go back to the fourth of an inch marking. So set your machine for the needle position in the center of your, of your foot. And here you can see I'm edge stitching a star into place, guiding the right side of the presser foot along the cut edge of the star. After you've stitched around the star using that simple straight stitch, this is what happens. On one side of the star, it looks like this, as you might guess. And on the flip side, I've started to do the trimming already. Trim away the excess fabric from the 10 by 13 inch square, eyeballing, just estimating about a fourth of an inch seam, and cut all the way around. That way you don't have to back two stars and making certain that they're sandwiched exactly together, you can simply just make the stars the same. How's that for being simple? So you're going to do this six times. Then after making the six blocks for, from each style, you're going to lay them out. And I've made a mini scale. This is mini scale, not full scale at all, and just kind of sewn traditionally so you'll be able to see the, the, the exact layout. We have three rows four blocks in each row, just alternating them. After you've created your layouts, then sew the seams together, sew the blocks together, again having all seam allowances to one side. So you'd sew all four blocks to create a row. After sewing all three rows, you guessed it, you're going to put the rows together. Now when you attach and especially in an intersection like this, there'll be a lot of fabric because you'll have double layers of each. You may want to back stitch in that seam, reinforcing that seam allowance in this area. Again, very important to use 15 to 18 stitches per inch when creating this quilt, a short stitch length. This is the basic quilt, but we added some interesting border and details to it. As you look at the quilt, you can see that we have a red, white, and blue border, as well as some smaller star blocks in the corners and then periodically throughout the border itself. You might guess that the smaller star block is created in the same manner as the bigger one. But let me give you the dimensions first of all, starting with the borders. Three fabrics, red, white, and blue flannel. The solid red was used here in a solid teal and the same blue fabric as the banner. Cut ten strips of each color. Make fabric combos or strip combos backing them and stitch red, white, and blue together. So you'll be stitching five of these combo strips together. Now I'm going to give you the dimensions for cutting these in various lengths. And this is just to make it kind of interesting. You'll see in a minute as I lay this out. You're going to be cutting four strips that are 26 inches long, two strips that are 16, and another two that are 11. Keep in mind those instructions are written in the book that accompanies this program. But just you can make those notes right now. So you'll be cutting them in those various lengths. As for the star, let me show you the star itself. The finished star or the cut size of the star is six inches. So you're going to be cutting six inch squares. We worked initially with a five inch square of the T color and then the shape of the star which will give you the pattern as well. So you can stitch around the star and then do the trimming on the reverse side, just the way we did before. So this is quilted at this point. All four layers have been stitched together. So you've cut your border strips. You've cut your star blocks and did the stitching as before. And now I'll show you how to lay this out. Actually, this size quilt is kind of interesting if it were pieced the traditional way. 
be a little hard to piece a small quilt with a ragged edge, but it's kind of a fun layout. First, we're going to start with the side borders, and you're going to be stitching the border lengths and the stars together. And I have a 16 inch strip, one of those 16 inches that I would attach, so, seaming it to a 5 inch square, excuse me, a 6 inch square for the star. And then this is a 26 inch length, so one of the 16, one of the 26. Now on the opposite side, we're just going to mirror image, put the shorter length of the block at the bottom. Just for some alternate change. And then the long 26 inch length. Now remember these stripes were cut a little bit smaller than the 3 inches. They were 2 and 3 fourths inches and then we stitched them together. So you can kind of see the fun layout. Across the top and along the lower edge, we're going to use the remaining strips and star blocks. Here we have a block. Another 26 inch length, a block. And let me flip this down so you can see a bit. Now a short length of 11 inches, and then the remaining star. So you'd seam all these together and then attach them as a last step across the top and do the same thing along the lower edge. So you can get to see what an interesting quilt shape this looks like. Now we're getting to the interesting part of creating the frayed edge look. Before I do the cutting though, let me tell you a little bit about the binding. To create the binding, we have two inch wide strips of the blue. And on this small little sample, I'm just going to show you that you would meet the two inch strip to the underside, the sewn side, and then sew with a half inch seam allowance. On this sample, it's been stitched half of an inch, and then you just press and wrap the fabric around the cut edge. Now this will be a raw edge. And what we need to do now is to stitch in the ditch, stitch in the well of the seam from the underside. And I have done this on this sample right here. It's been stitched in the underside. And this will leave a raw edge right here. But the flip side will be finished just the way the seaming has finished the fabric. And on the right side, you'll have a raw edge. Now comes the fray part. You're going to have this nice quilt that's been all sewn together. And to do the fraying, nice little scissors, short, stitch, short blades, I should say, and clip just about, not too, but just about to the stitching. If by chance you clip too far, just re restitch that area. So you, I'm first I'm just working in the binding area. Now for the half inch area, and I think you can see it better if, if I cut with the ivory facing you, clip every fourth of an inch, stopping above the stitching line. You don't want to clip to that stitching line. Now this takes a little time, and to be very honest, when I first did this, I missed a roll of cutting. It's easy to do. It's easy to forget about or miss seeing it. Now when I get to the seams where all of these seam allowances come together, take some time to cut through these areas because you want them to fray. That's the appeal of this quilt. And now through all of these areas, again, do a lot of clipping. Clip the whole quilt. It'll take you a while. Put it in the washing machine, to, in the rinse cycle, spin it out, put it in the dryer for 15 minute increments. I can't stress that enough. Dry it for 15 minutes. Go to your lint drawer. Remove the lint. This is about 30 minutes worth of lint, so you need to have never shown lint on Sewing with Nancy before, but this is a lint that will accumulate in that drawer. And the effect of drying it after it's been washed will give you this frayed edge look, a very Americana quilting process. Hi, I'm Pat Hahn, Sewing with Nancy book editor. Congratulations, Nancy, on 20 years of exceptional education on Sewing with Nancy. The key elements to working with frayed edge quilting are to make fabric combo strips, meeting fabrics back to back, sewing with half inch seam allowances and a short stitch length, clipping just about to the stitching line, then let your washer and dryer do the rest. At home and at my studio, I sew with Koala cabinets because of their perfect design. There's no waste of time in getting started. Because of the Koala soft touch airlift system, the machine quickly and gently raises to the perfect sewing position.
The design allows me to sit directly in front of the needle in clear view of my work with no strain on my neck or back. And Koala has a place for all my favorite notions and supplies. I always feel more efficient and more motivated to do my best work when my space is organized. A perfect design, that's why I sew with Koala. Here's a hint from Ginger. When you're doing machine embroidery or cut work, it's sometimes a challenge to trim threads and fabric from the hoop fabric. I keep my curved embroidery scissors close by for just those occasions. The curved blade cleanly cuts threads close to my work without cutting my stitching, and the slender blades allow me to cut right next to my straight stitch cut work design. Another terrific use of the curved embroidery scissors is to trim closely to scallop stitching. This is a very versatile scissors. Here's a hint from Adira. Adding a layer of stabilizer to the top or bottom of a project is an important step, giving extra stability to the fabric. For most of my projects, I prefer Avalon by Madeira. This water-soluble stabilizer has double the strength of comparable stabilizers. I simply place the Avalon underneath the fabric, giving the fabric some general stability. If working with nap fabrics like fleece or corduroy, to keep the threads from embedding into the nap, place the Avalon on top and underneath the fabric. When finished, just simply tear away the majority of the stabilizer and spritz the rest away. Here's a hint from Pfaff. For the most accurate of top and edge stitching, use Pfaff's ability to change the needle positions. There are a total of 19 positions ranging from far left to far right, plus many more positions in between. I use the needle position option frequently when using the edge stitch foot. The stitching can be positioned just at your preference. I also use the needle position option when top stitching a zipper. I know you'll find many more uses. Patchwork techniques and flannel fabrics are as American as apple pie. Today on Sewing with Nancy, I'll combine these two American namesakes in a series I call Star Spangled Patchwork. Let's start with a stand-up quilt. This quilt has no time for hanging around. Learn the basics of foundation piecing to create an intricate patchwork star using flannel. This stand-up concept is a perfect place to try a new technique. Just slip your finished mini quilt on the acrylic picture frame. That's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Many of my quilt projects take weeks or perhaps months to finish. What I like about making a stand-up quilt is I can try a new technique and finish the project in an evening. This paper piece star has two layers of flannel fabric and on the flip side you will see a pocket that is across the top that simply flips over or fits over a, an acrylic picture stand. So you can change the picture frame quilt per season and it's a, as I mentioned, great way to try a new technique. We're using flannel. You don't have to use flannel, but through the series we're using this cozy fabric, the Americana look. We've chosen three different colors, the tea color, a print in the red, and a kind of a slate blue color. Choose whatever colors you'd like. And we're working with a pattern that I'm going to show you how we designed it and how it's going to appear for you. When working with paper piecing, you're using a piece of paper as the foundation stitching on it, and you're able then later to take away the paper to get a tiny little piece of a patchwork in a normal template uh, technique would require a very tedious piecing. We're not going to need that at all, just using this foundation paper. But we had to design this in sections, so after designing it, we cut it apart cut it apart so it could be sewn. And after cutting it apart, we added seam allowances. So the pattern that you will work with will have seam allowances in these basic quadrants areas. You can see here we had a little seam allowance added on this edge. So ever, wherever we added an edge or cut an edge, a seam allowance was added, a fourth of an inch seam. Now in working with the fabrics, there we saw the three colors. We're going to cut strips basically for the colorations and the blue has the largest sections. I've cut a strip of fabric that is just slightly wider than the widest part of the section and it doesn't have to be accurate, you don't have to measure it. The narrow strips are out of red fabric so we cut strips that are again a generous a half an inch at least to possibly one inch wider than the widest part of the printed area. 
And then for the triangle from the center, I'm going to start off with a relatively large triangle. The fabric goes on the non-printed side of the paper, and this is, we're going to sew from the printed side. Now you have to photocopy the design from the book onto either regular photocopy paper or wash away foundation paper. And I'm using the wash away paper. I'll show you how that dissolves as we go along in the process. Now before I start to do any sewing, I'm going to do some positioning lines, some creasing lines. Now, Donna Fenske, who's been our, one of a guest, our guest on Sewing with Nancy several times and is my co-worker, taught me this idea. It is priceless when it comes to working with foundation piecing. And that is to give yourself some crease marks, some positioning lines. We're going to be cutting the fabric a, a fourth of an inch larger on each stitching line. Rather than measuring, right now I'm simply going to place the fourth of an inch mark of my ruler along one of the stitching lines, fold the, fab, fold the paper excuse me, along the ruler and crease. Find the next crease mark place the ruler toward the next color at the fourth of an inch and crease. It's fast, but you will see as we progress what this will do for your accuracy and efficiency. Now as I lift this up, you can possibly see the marks that are indented just a little bit. That will be positioning lines for fabric. I was a little ahead of myself earlier. I was placing or pinning the T fabric, the fabric which is square number one, behind square number one. It's kind of like a game show. What's behind the door? Here we have what's behind. We put it behind the mark. And before I get going, I'm just going to follow that crease mark, fold the fabric, and trim the fabric to size. Not exactly along that crease mark, but close to it. That will avoid my having to work with so much bulk from the underside. Takes a little while to get going and here we just have the seam allowance marked. Okay, now I'll get step number two or fabric number two, meeting right sides of the fabrics together. I'll align my strip to the cut edge of the step number one. And I'm going to be stitching the line between block number one and block number two. Straight stitching is all you need for this technique. And let me just make sure I haven't moved my fabric. I did a little bit. And I'm going to stitch on that line with a short stitch length. I'm just going to position this one more time. Here we go. And you can sew with several stitches per inch. And you can overshoot, or un overshoot your line. Don't undershoot it. Just overshoot your line a little bit. Cut your threads. And I've stitched from the paper side, the printed side, but from the opposite side, I'll press the fabric to the right side to expose it. And then from the paper side, I'll fold down the fabric, or fold down the paper, excuse me, along the crease mark, and then trim off the excess fabric. So I can do that right now. So there's a system that you'll get into. Your, you will stitch it, and then you'll do some finger pressing it forward, then trim. To the other side, I'm going to add the third section, fill that third section in. Again, align fabrics along those cut edges. The flannel adheres to each other, so that works out very well. Flip this to the bed of my machine and stitch. Perfect technique to use up scraps of fabric. Short stitches per inch, about 15 to 18 stitches per inch is what you'll need. Cut your threads, you'll get a system, bring it up, press it, and notice now that I'm able to get that point of the star so accurate. Even though I haven't cut a template, I'm able to see that. Now I'll simply do my system again, fold back, on along that crease mark, see how handy those are. Bring it down to my work surface. If you can have a rotary cutter and mat right next to your work surface, it will certainly save some time. Now I'll add my blue, one of the blue sections. And if you like the sequencing, which you have learned in about five minutes or less, you can make this star, as I mentioned, in a very short period of time. Move it out of the way and Line it up once again. And as you, before you sew, you might have to reposition it because you 
you can't see what you're doing. And keep on sewing here. Cut your threads and flip one more time. Now I have one more quadrant to add to this section. I have another blue section to add in this area, but you'd add it in the same technique. Let me show you all four of these sections that have been stitched. You saw how they were separated a few minutes ago. Well, here's the section or a like section that I was sewing. All five pieces of fabric have been added and now all sections have been stitched together. You noticed earlier that we added fourth of an inch seam allowances where, they, where the sections would be sewn together. This is section A and I would flip it to meet section B. Meet your stitching lines and sew. When this is accomplished, we have lots of samples here. You can see here is section A and B sewn together. You would use the same technique to add the left side and the right side to your finished patchwork star. And here you go. Now on the, to finish this, we need to do some trimming to add a border and also to remove the foundation paper. And I'll show that to you right now at the table. Now it's time to prepare this pieced star so that you can have it for your hang-up quilt. We're going to I should call it stand-up quilt. We're going to trim the size so that we have a size that about a fourth of an inch beyond each point of the star. We want the star to be points to be included in the board, not to be included in the border. So I'm going to trim off just this extra little bit. So a fourth of an inch beyond the points of the star. And to finish the flip side, we have paper. And I've started to remove some of the paper foundation because I used a short stitch length. The paper will away, it's been perforated, but some of the paper pieces will be left. If you've used the wash away foundation, you can rinse it away, you can place the fabric in water and it will dissolve. I'll just show you this on a little bit of a leftover fabric, you can just, or paper, you can place it in the water for a couple of seconds, it's biodegradable, and pretty soon it dissolves. Don't do this to your entire paper, remove as much as you can, but to get rid of all those little pieces it sure is an easy thing. Otherwise, use the tweezers and pull out the rest of the paper that you may have as the foundation. We placed a border around all four sides. Use the simple technique, didn't miter the corners, just cut one and a half inch strips stitched at the top and the lower edge and then each side, and then cut a layer of the flannel the same size as your finish, finished block. To make this a stand-up quilt using the same width, which happens to be about nine and three-fourths. We cut a nine and three-fourths by six inch rectangle and folded it in half, and this will be the pocket. This is where the acrylic portion of the picture frame will hang. In order for it to hang, though, you need a binding. Use your favorite binding technique, and I'm going to give you kind of a quick version of my favorite binding idea. I cut strips that are about two and a half inches wide no narrower, two and a half or two and three fourths, and fold them meeting the long edge edges and the insides, the wrong sides. Starting with about a six inch tail in the middle of the block, I have started to sew with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. This would be the right side of your quilt. S sew until about a, a fourth of an inch, and I should have had that pin there, there's that pin at a fourth of an inch from the corner. Stop sewing a fourth of an inch from the corner Fold the fabric at a 90 degree angle, like a picture frame, and then fold it back upon itself. And then you can stitch from the very folded edge down to the next corner, stopping a fourth of an inch, repeating as you go around the quilt. The binding is then pressed to the underside, pinned and stitched in the ditch. You stitch in the well of the, uh, well of the seam so that you catch the binding on the underside. So here's our finished quilt. You can see on the inside that, I've, that stitching shows, but it doesn't really show from the top side because we stitched right in the well of the seam. The pocket, the underneath pocket, is what slips over the acrylic picture hanger. And you can see why we call this a stand-up quilt and a perfect evening project. 
Next, take a different approach. Create a folk art design using the same colorations as the first quilt, this time with an applique approach. Outline the stars with a blanket stitch. Attach the smaller star with a rustic wood button, and just like that, a star is born. We're working with traditional patchwork techniques during this program, kind of Americana style, and what could be more Americana than folk art? Folk art is achieved in patchwork by working with a blanket stitch. And the blanket stitch is around the large star as well as the small detachable star. In the first program of this series, we made a frayed edge quilt with some star designs on it. This is the same pattern, this time just as an applique. When working with appliques, my favorite technique is to work with paper-backed fusible web. I think many of you have used this before, but just as a quick review, you trace the star design, in this instance both the large star and the small star, on the paper side of the fusible web and roughly cut it out. Then fuse to the wrong side of the fabric after it's been roughly cut out and fused, then you trim to the correct size. And then remove the paper backing. And the paper backing sometimes is the hardest to remove. You've got to get it started with the tip of your pin, pull it off, and then this side is the position that you place on the fabric to fuse it into place. So we have a small star and a large star cut out with the fusible backing all at once. To make any design to fit over an acrylic frame, your finished star or finished block I should say should be approximately nine and three fourths by twelve and a fourth and that's what we have here a finished size but to get there we started with a dimension of seven and three fourths by ten and then added one and a half inch strips all the way around with fourth of an inch seam allowances this large star would be fused into place and you can position it any way you'd like just it will extend into the borders just don't have it go beyond the cut edge and you can press, and this has been pressed. My life is in samples, I think. I have lots of step-by-steps. So we're ready to do some stitching. First of all, some machine setups and some testings. Check what decorative stitches you have available on your sewing machine that would resemble a blanket stitch. I had two options, and great options to choose from. One with a double stitch or triple stitch, the one on your left, and then a, a one with a more reinforced stitch, triple stitch along the very edge. I decided to use the one on the left. I'm working with rayon thread in the top and just a lightweight bobbin thread for the bobbin so it's not so heavy. You might want to do some test runs because you may want to change the width of the stitch, the length of the stitch according to your needs. And I did mirror image my stitch so that I would have the straight edge stitching on the right side of the, of the fabric. You'll need a stabilizer, and I'm going to place a stabilizer underneath the fabric. A tearaway stabilizer will work the best. And as I mentioned, do a little test run. But let me just show you, since I've tested this already, the guidelines I like to use. I have an open toe foot set on my machine, and in this open toe, let me start at the, at the very corner of a star here, or at an inside corner. There we go, and I can guide the fabric along the inside of the right toe. And very fast. You may want to adjust your tension if need be so that it's adjusted by two numbers so that the bobbin thread stays under. And as I'm getting close to the point of the star, since I have such a wide zig of the stitch, what I'm going to do is to slightly narrow the stitch width so I'm not taking quite as large of a bite. And I'll stop with the needle in the down position at the corner then pivot the fabric and come back. And as I'm stitching beyond a fourth of an inch, then I'll increase the stitch length to the, the length I was at before and just continue to go around the star in this manner. When working with the detachable star, we did the same stitching, but this time on felt. And after stitching on the felt, then cut very close to the star. You could stitch on other fabric, it just might ravel a little bit more. Notice we have a buttonhole. You can finish your stand-up quilt with the same technique I detailed earlier. You can stitch on a button, button on your detachable or just simply stitch the star onto the quilt just with the button. The choice is yours. These are two options to make a stand-up quilt, to try your hand at some new quilting techniques. I hope you'll try this Americana folk art star.
Hi, I'm Linda Griepentrog from Stone News Magazine, and I'd just like to offer congratulations to Nancy for 20 years of great public television programming. The key to sewing very detailed patchwork is to work with foundation piecing. My favorite idea is to photocopy the design onto water-soluble foundation piecing paper so that you can eliminate that and then piece as normal. Hope you give it a try. Here's a hint from Primdritz, the manufacturers of OmniGrid rulers. These precision laser-cut rulers give unmatched accuracy. They're made of heavy-duty clear acrylic and are perfect for rotary cutting any color fabric from light to dark. OmniGrid's exclusive double sight lines are printed on the underside of the ruler for greatest accuracy in contrasting black and yellow, enabling you to see the measurements you need. Notice the ease of measuring on this pink fabric as well as a dark print. In addition to the straight cutting lines, you'll find degree lines 60, 45, and 30, allowing you to cut geometric shapes without the use of templates. I think you can see why I use OmniGrid rulers on TV and at home. Here's a hint from Amazing Designs by Great Notions. Sometimes a garment requires subtle embroidery due to the fabric weight or the delicate garment style, like this cotton piquet shell. Amazing Designs suggest looking at embroidery designs with a new eye. Look to see if you can eliminate some colors or elements to get a completely different look. The flowers on this shell are from the Amazing Designs Floral Collection number 5, where they are shown in very large, vibrant flowers. By eliminating all the color except the outline, you have a look that's just right for this garment. Here's a look at Rowenta's Steam Generator, an iron I use in my home and at the studio. The steam generator features a lightweight iron and a 33 ounce water tank for steam on demand. Continuous steam is available at a touch of a button, generating twice as much steam as a conventional iron. I use the vertical steam feature for final pressing and when creating home decorating projects. The steam generator's water tank provides up to one and a half hours of steam without refilling. Now you can see why Rowenta is a choice of professionals. It's time to discover the joy of working with streamlined quilting techniques during this series on Star Spangled Patchwork. The project for this third program is a quillow, a quilt and pillow combination. There's more to this project that meets the eye. Nestled inside this applique pillow is a lap quilt. The process is remarkably simple, plus there are many creative options to add homespun charm. The soft and cozy flannel adds to the pleasure of sewing and using this quillow. That's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. I'm going to show you how to create this quillow in two different steps. First of all, creating the pillow top, working with the stars and the stripes, the piecing and the applique area, and then showing you how to create the blanket that's nestled inside the pillow. The pillow will be attached permanently to the blanket, and I'll also give you those details as well. Four fabrics, you can see four different colors of flannel, two in the blue and a cream, and a burgundy color or whatever choice you'd like to work with. For the striped pillow top, you're going to be needing one and a half inch strips, crosswise strips, three of each color. So simply with your rotary cutter and ruler, and I have the fabric folded in half crosswise and a half again, I'm just going to cut one and a half inch strips, three of them again of each color. We're going to start with the light blue and the dark blue print and then do some sewing of those strips together. Fourth of an inch seam allowances is all you'll need to do the stitching. Stitching the two together to make a pair and then as I have already done here press all the seam allowances to one side. Pressing them not open but to one side and then do some sub cutting. This will be a 45 inch strip. You'll have three of them subcut it into a length of 13 and a half inches six times 13 and a half inches and then you're going to be sewing the subcuts together sewing the pairs together and this will give you the base for the center of the pillow there'll be one extra cut after you have the six sewn together and that is a single here we have it hidden a single darker blue strip so that the darker blue is on both ends of your center pillow Simple again, fourth of an inch seam allowances. Here we have the sample that has been sewn together, 13 and a half inch square, and you're going to be putting the stars in this area. 
I know many of you have worked with paper-backed fusible web in the past, and we've done this earlier in this series. Simply use the star applique, traced it to the paper side five times, then roughly cut them out and fuse them, and I just have a single one here, to the wrong side of the flannel. Now I didn't mention as I started this program that you're going to pre-wash your fabric. Make sure you pre-wash it separately. The flannel is going to be uh, needing that because it does have some residual shrinkage. So do the cutting, do the pre-washing, cut out the stars, and then peel off the paper backing. And then you can position these, taking some time to position and fuse into place. On our finished pillow top, we've done some satin stitching. In the second program of this series, we did blanket stitching. That would be another option. You'll see a sample of that a little bit later on. You have many options to work with. Here we simply used a simple stat satin stitch. The key is don't make the stitch too wide. Make it about a two to two and a half inch, not inch, millimeter width and a short stitch length sewing around the edges. Here you can see the zigzagging and the close-up of the zigzagging, zigging the fabric, zag off the very edge. And make it a very easy stitch using the thread to match the fabric so that you don't have to worry about making certain that all your stitches are perfectly straight. The other option will be to do some embroidery. And perhaps you'll think of some other options yourself, but on this center block we have three embroidered stars a perfect place to use your computerized embroidery option we have chosen from americana theme and a, a an embroidery as you can see here i'm pointing out and i'll be doing this at the machine we used two in one direction flip the third for a mirror image and i think it makes kind of a nice change a nice charm to this pillow top i'll show you that now as you can see, I'm in the process of embroidering another pillow top. And I just wanted to go through some of the details. This design came on a CD or a floppy disk. And the design was a little bit smaller than I wa what I wanted to work with. This was the actual size of the design on the floppy disk. So using a sizing program, we made it just a little bit larger so that we only had to embroider three stars instead of perhaps five stars on the top of this pillow top. Some embroidery hints when working with pieced fabrics, make sure your fabric has been pressed, thoroughly pressed, so that the seam allowances are as flat as they can be. And then add a press-on stabilizer. As you can see, this is a tearaway stabilizer. We'll take care, or we we'll get rid of a little bit later, but right now it's been pressed to the underside. Since this was a design that came on a floppy disk on my computer, I was able to print out several templates and I made copies. Two of the templates I'm having in the direction that the design was positioned and the third template I mirror image. So I photocopied that one in the flip position. And you position the templates on your fabric, in this instance the pillow top where you would like them. You're not stitching over the paper, you're just using it for positioning so that your needle and your starting position can be according to the template. You'll have to adjust your hoop or your needle position, however your computerized embroidery system is set up. I always like to have my thread in a row. I have the first thread color already in the machine, and then followed by a burgundy, a light brown, a light blue, and a dark navy. And I have all these four threads, the remaining four threads, ready to go so that I can do the quick stitching. And then, here we go, in the bobbin, I have a lightweight bobbin thread. In my machine, I place the fabric on top of the hoop. And now, we've talked about uh, fusible or water-soluble stabilizers and press-on stabilizers and just a whole host of them. This, this stabilizer will have fabric adhered to it once you, whoop, once you wet it. You have to have it in the hoops thoroughly. I'll just take it out. But once this surface becomes wet, then you can place fabric on top of it and it will adhere. If we look at the machine right now as it's stitching, you'll see that the fabric is not inside the hoop, but adhered to the stabilizer underneath. And it sticks there because of that surface that allows it, the fabrics to hold together. So even though this is embroidering on heavy fabric, the two are going together very securely. So whatever type of stabilizer that you'd like to use where the fabric adheres to the stabilizer, choose that because I think probably that's the best way to go rather than leaving a hoop imprint on the flannel and you would get that on the flannel.
It takes time to stitch these out. It's not difficult. You just have to change threads after when the, your machine tells you to do so. After each stitching, there are five threads in this particular design or whatever design you may choose You'll to change threads and then reposition your fabric in your hoop using the template as, a, as the positioning tool and then go through the process again. It's a simple process, but a very enjoyable process. So you can use the applique idea or embroidery idea for your quillow with the star spangled effect. The pillow portion of the quillow does the work of holding the blanket inside, plus it's the decorative portion. I just finished showing you some options for the applique or the embroidery of the pillow square in the center. Now we're just going to add these simple borders along the stripes. Earlier, I asked you to cut three one and a half inch strips of each color. Now we need to use the red or the burgundy and the cream color, one and a half inch strips, and stitch together a pair of the each color, one of each color, so that you'll have about a 45 or 44 by three, in, three inch strips sewn together. Subcut these into smaller strips, three and a half inches. You'll need six subcuts per each side of the quilt. After you've cut all of these sides, then you're going to re-sew these together. You sew together, you cut apart. That's just the system of working with quilts. So you'll have six subcuts and then an extra, an extra length of the cream, one and a half by three and a half. And sew these small little sections together and you will end up with the stripes that will be used on the side. Now I'm going to put this along one of the one sides of my little center pillow just to show you that it should meet the side of the pillow and with right sides together you detach. You do the same stitching attaching another stripe on the remaining side. Simple to see what happens next. When working with the top section you're going to have a red, white, and a red section. So sew strips together of the one and a half inch length to create a red, white, and red and subcut into the length of the top, the finished width. This happens to be about 19 and a half inches, but whatever your quilt top measures, this is what you would cut it to meet, both for the top edge and the lower edge. And so the, the pillow top. So you can see adding those stripes adds a nice accent, not very difficult. We're always using the same width of the strips and just doing a little subcutting to make certain that you have interesting design on both sides. After you've created this top of the quillow, I'm going to show you how to put it together. Now what's interesting about the, the construction here is that creating of the pillow and the creating of the blanket follow some of the same sewing sequence. So I'll go through that right now. You're going to cut a backing for this pillow top the same size as your finished pillow top. Now all the dimensions are in the booklet that accompanies the program, but if your pillow top was a little bit smaller, a little bit larger, it's not going to make any difference because this is a very free-flowing project. You can make it really whatever size you'd like. So cut a backing the same size as the finished project and you're going to meet right sides. And then you're going to sew the two together. And I like to sew with wrapped corners and I have a sample that should more clearly show the wrap corners and it's so that the corners do not have a lot of bulk so you can easily turn them. When, tur when stitching a pillow and I have a smaller pillow size I like to sew each side seam and then after sewing the side seam to sew the top edge I like to wrap, wrap the seam allowance along the first stitching line. So let me scoot this side up to show you that technique. If you haven't tried this before give this a try because if you fold it along the stitching line and start sewing right where I had that little stitch then you will not be having the bulk that's at the center or at the top of the seam. You'll get rid of the bulk. So you're going to sew along all four edges leaving about a four inch opening on one edge so you can turn it right side out. But before doing that we'd like to add just a little batting to this pillow just to give it some loft and some design. So after doing the stitching sewing the edges, then lay the same size as the pillow, a layer of batting. So that the batting does not get in the bulk of the seam, what I'd like you to do is to zigzag the batting to the seam allowance. Just zigzag it in, not included in the stitching line, just a very loose zigzag around the edge. Now turn the pillow right side out and you'll do have to do a little sewing to close the 
top edge, where you turned it. So you're going to set your pillow aside, and now we're going to look at creating the blanket. We're going to be working in very small scale so that I could work with it on the table, but the pillow is much larger than actually what my sample of the blanket is. This is the blanket size. Actually, you will have two layers of fabric that will be 45 inches wide, which is the width of your fabric, and 60 inches, 45 by 60. Now, if you pre-wash flannel, it may shrink down, so you may have a 43 inch width. That's just fine. Whatever the width of your flannel is, times 60 inches, or by 60 inches. Two pieces of fabric. You're going to meet the two fabrics together. Do the wrap corners. Leave an opening, as I mentioned earlier, and here I have the opening allowed, so you can turn it right side out, and, at, and before turning it, do attach the batting and a crib size bat is 45 by 60. That's why we chose the size of a blanket. So you just buy a crib size batting and stitch it or zigzag it in the seam allowances. And when you turn it inside out, you'll get very sharp corners by using the technique I showed you, by wrapping those corners. That's the advantage of doing it. So you have this very large piece of fabric. Now on my table it's not very large, but it will be much larger working on your, on a kitchen table or perhaps a ping pong table works out well. And now you'll need to pin all of these layers together. I'm going to show you in a few minutes on our quilt, we have it tied, all the layers tied the way my grandma used to tie quilts for me. And instead of just using yarn to tie it, we've used embroidery floss and a button to kind of have this Americana theme in it. You wouldn't have to use a button, you could just tie it with yarn and floss. The choice is yours. But we've made this tied about every 8 to 10 inches. To follow that same concept, you're going to mark your quilt top and using a ruler, a block, whatever you'd like to work with, and since this is half scale, I'm going to pl I place to mark every four inches instead of every eight inches. And you can see crosswise pin marks where we're going to have the tying effect. So you would keep on marking so that you know where to tie these layers together. Obviously, if you don't quilt or tie through all the layers, the layers are going to shift. And after a while, of course, it will get all matted inside. So you need to attach everything together. You saw the buttons that were used, just sewn at each section, and that's a kind of a fun way, a folk art way of attaching it. If you were going to just use yarn to do the tying, or in this instance I have embroidery floss, cut a very long length of floss. And what I like to do when working with this is make sure your fabric's very flat and pinned together, take a stitch at one of the intersections, and then stitch the next one stitch the third one. Stitch all of the, or many of the intersections before cutting your yarns. And after doing this, then you're going to do some clipping. Clip leaving about a two inch tail, then pull your thread, leave a two inch tail, then pull. This way you're not using your scissors up and down, up and down. You get all your sewing done, all your quilting, all your cutting done at one time. And then I use tie a square knot left over right and right over left. And you may want to put a dab of a seam sealant in here to lock it. In a poor folk art, you may want to leave it long. On our finished project, we did a little bit more than that. We did the button sewing. And button sewing would, could follow the same process. Let me just put this aside and show you how we've tied it. Leaving long thread tails let the thread tails add to the charm of the quilt. Now this is a very big, this is a much larger piece of fabric and I want to show you how we attach the pillow. You can kind of see the pillow stitching from one side, but on the reverse side we have the pillow stitched on. You can't see the pretty part of the pillow, but inside is the pretty portion of it, the, the charm, the Americana style. We place that finished square right on top of one side of the blanket, centering it and edge stitching as close as possible the very edge of the pillow to the blanket. To work with this when you have this stored in your car or in the dorm room or in your den, you fold it in thirds and then kind of wrap this up. And a little harder for me to do on this short table, 
but wrap it till it fits the size of the pillow. Then turn this inside out. And when I turn it inside out, the pillow goes, or the blanket goes inside the pillow, and with a little primping, you'll have yourself a quillow, a pillow and a comforter in one. It's been my pleasure to join Nancy on Sewing with Nancy. Thank you for sharing the joy of sewing with so many. Congratulations on 20 years. This series on Star Spangled Patchwork included three creative projects, the Frayed Edge Quilt, Stand-Up Quilt with Paper Piecing, and the Quillow, a Pillow and Quilt in One. These are easy projects to work with. Enjoy the process. Bye for now. Visit Nancy's website at www.sewingwithnancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy has been made possible by grants from the following companies. Bop, simply the best European line of sewing machines. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears. Madeira Threads, because creativity is never black and white. Prim Drifts, the source for sewing and quilting notions. Amazing designs by Great Notions, your one source for home embroidery and design software. Koala cabinets designed with maximum storage using minimum space. Rowenta, professional performance and beautiful results for all types of ironing. And Nancy's Notions Sewing Catalog featuring specialty sewing books and notions.